Hi, my name is Shreyanj and my partner's name is Rushal. We are Team Robonauts from US 7054 and we are participating in the U19 Coast Space Rescue Competition. Hello, I'm Rushal Reddy, the designer and strategist for Team Robonauts. I was learning robotics for, since the past three years and I participated in an FLL competition and got third place. I'm excited to be a part of the RoboCup 2021 as it is my first RoboCup. I have been learning robotics for the past three years and participated in RoboCup 2020 and won the award for the best presentation and most popular video. The goal is to avoid obstacles and trap zones and get as many gems as possible to score the most points. To achieve this goal, we have to code a solution for the following challenges. One. Make sure the robot moves across the map and picks up an RCB set to summon a super dome. 2. Navigating to the deposit zone when the robot is fully loaded with 6 gems. 3. Avoiding the trap zone when gems are loaded. 4. The detection of the edge of the map. 5. The detection of obstacles. 6. Handling the location loss zone. 7. Handling the swarm zone. 8. Picking up the super gem slash super plus gem. We have discussed the strategies to address each of these challenges in the next few slides. We have divided the map into 9 imaginary grids for better location tracking and navigation based on the XY coordinates. The Y range is 0 to 270, while the X range is 0 to 360. The process of planning is from left to right. Here is the grid analysis for this map. Grid 1 has the special zone and the obstacles. Grid 2 and 8 has the deposit zones. Therefore, once the robot is fully loaded, you have to navigate towards the zone 3 has a lot of randomly colored gems. So it's a higher chance of getting an RCB set. Grid 4, Grid 5, and Grid 7 are just colored blocks. Grid 6 and 9 are mainly made of the swamp zone. Now once the robot is loaded, the maximum number of blocks, which is 6, will navigate to the nearest deposit grid. The navigations for each grid. The deposit zones are grid 2 and grid 8 for this map. The nearest deposit zone for grid 1 is grid 2. So the nearest deposit zone for grid 3 is grid 2 as well. The nearest deposit zone for grid 4 is grid 8. The nearest deposit zone for grid 5 is grid 2. The nearest deposit zone for grid 7 is grid 8, and the nearest deposit zone for grid 9 is grid 8. Some strategies we used was finding the RGB set. If we get one RGB set, then we get a super gem, and we get extra points for it. What we did for navigating to the deposit zone was, if it got full at a certain grid, then it would go directly to the deposit zone that's closest. And for trap zone detection, if it detects yellow, it will turn away from the trap zone. For handling the location lost areas, what we did was when X and Y were equal to zero, we made it so that the robot goes through it and doesn't stop or try and turn because it doesn't have the positions. For obstacle detection, what we did was we used an ultrasonic sensor to detect whatever obstacle was nearby and it turned away from it. For picking up the Super Gem and Super Gem Plus, we put the code for pink and if it detects pink, it will pick up the object. This slide talks about the searching algorithm for blocks. Some of the methods we employed were for the AI algorithm to search for gems. We coded the robot to navigate the grid with lots of gems and minimal obstacles, such as the 3. As Super Gem is worth lots of bonus points, 
He coded the robot to navigate the grids that had a large variety of blocks to increase the likelihood of getting an RCB set to submit a super gem. For optical detection, trap detection, and edge detection, we had to use all of our sensors. Since the trap zone border is yellow, we created a color sensor range that detects the color and avoids it. For the obstacles, we used a different technique that used ultrasound sensor to detect an obstacle. We wrote the code so that if there was an obstacle less than 15 units away, the robot would have to avoid it. Finally, to maneuver around edges, we coded the robot using the XY coordinate range to remain in the map. This slide shows the depositing algorithm we used once the robot was fully loaded with gems. Once we located the grid using XY coordinates, we could easily navigate the robot to move through the different grids to find the deposit grid. The preliminary challenge, they were grid 2 and grid 8. To help the robot stay on path, we had to use a compass for direction. In the process, losing the ability to move diagonal, but removing a percentage of making mistakes. This video shows us how the robot will pick up objects. Right now, it's going through the swamp zone, and as you can see, the robot will become painfully slow. And now it's experiencing the at edge code, which will avoid going out. Right now, it's not picking up any blocks because it has to be directly over them. Now it's going to pick up its black block and directly in front of it, the red block. Right about now, the robot will pick up its last block. It's going to keep spinning until it's going to point directly to grid 2, and the robot will stay in grid 2 until it deposits, and about now you will see it deposit. Right now it's in the position that it will go into the position lost right next to the deposit zone. So you just want it to go forward so it gets out of the deposit zone, and now it can work properly. Now it's depositing. When we first started the code, the robot kept getting stuck between the grids. What we did to fix this was look at the grid it was stuck in and fix the X and Y positions. If a grid had too many obstacles, the robot could get easily stuck. We fixed this by having the robot move to another grid. When the robot was depositing while in a location lost, it would get stuck. We fixed this by telling the robot to move until it is out of the lost location zone. By using these strategies, we got a consistent 1000 to 1300 points. In the future, we could add a code for the Super Gem and the Super Gem Plus. Overall, this competition was fun and an educational experience. One of the most important lessons we have learned was to troubleshoot and plan efficiently to have the most effective results. The coding process encourages critical thinking and improves problem-solving skills. The coding process taught us to do methodological planning and adaptability to challenges. The RCAP competition was a great way to learn teamwork, a very important life skill. Thank you. We would like to thank the organizers for giving us this wonderful opportunity. We thoroughly enjoyed the process and learned a lot of valuable lessons. We would like to thank our mentor, Ms. Ashwini Anil, and her parents for their support and inspiration. Thank you again.